All right, hi guys, and welcome to our next lesson on the famine. So today we're going to be thinking about the course of the famine, the actual years of the famine, and what was going on, what how the causes of the famine took effect over the years of nine of eighteen forty five up into the 1850s. So to start off today we want to think back on what those causes were that we looked at in our last lesson. So first task for today is just a thinking task, so this is just something to get you back into uh, the mind of what was going on at the time. And I want you to see can you, how many of the causes can you remember? So we talked about four different causes to the famine in the last lesson, how many of those can you remember? So I'm going to suggest just pause the video for a second, have a think about that, you know, give yourself a few minutes to go through your mind and see how many of those four you can come up with. Okay, so the four um, causes of the famine that we had in the last lesson. We had a steep rise in population, and we said this began around the year 1700, and uh, really, really became quite rapid in the early 1800s, start of the 19th century. This is when the population came up quite rapidly, and we've seen that graph um, of the population really going up at a very steep trajectory in the 1830s and 80, or 1820s, 1830s. We talked about the subdivision of land that uh, people, when fathers uh, were giving up their land to their sons, the land would be divided between all of the sons, so each son would get a smaller portion of land. And we said that as you look at multiple generations, if a father is having four or five sons and each of them is having four or five sons, within two generations the amount of land available to the families becomes much, much smaller. We talked about there as being an over-dependence on a single crop, and that crop of course being the potato that whilst there were other crops being grown in Ireland at the time, it was only the potato that was used to feed the majority of the Irish population. A lot of the other food was going to higher classes and even being exported. So there was a huge dependence in Ireland on the potato to keep people fed. And that led then into the fact that when the potato blight arrived, and the blight arrived throughout, the country, throughout Europe, you know, this wasn't just a disease that only affected potatoes in Ireland, it affected people, it affected uh, populations throughout the world, really. It came from South America and it came over to Europe and affected a huge amount of Europe. But because of Ireland's uh, huge dependence on potatoes, this is why uh, the blight had such a huge effect on the Irish people. So you can see that all of these four causes are linked together. For today, what we're going to do on is going to be moving on to understanding an overview of the famine years, and then uh, we're also going to look at creating a timeline of the years of the Great Hunger. To finish off, then, we're going to have a quick look at a source from the time, a primary source, a newspaper article from the time of the famine, and look at what we can learn from that. So, first task that I'm going to, or the next major task that I'm going to be asking you to do is looking at the famine years. So while we're going through this, what you should be doing is a number of things. You should be listening to what I'm saying here to you. As I go through, so I'm going to start with the year 1845. I would suggest after I finish talking about 1845, you pause the video and you're going to fill in, you see this timeline down at the bottom, and you're going to fill in one or two sentences about what was going on in 1845 in Ireland. I'll then talk about 1846, again you'll listen, then you'll pause and fill in 1846, and so on with 1847, then 1848 to 1850 we'll do together, and then 1850 to 1852. Now all of this information can also be found on in the booklet, okay, so please do use the booklet if you're having trouble keeping up with what we're talking about within the video. So to start off with, what you're going to do is you're going to open up the template which I've attached to the assignment on Teams, or if you prefer to do this handwritten in your own copy, that's fine as well. And then I'll get started on 1845. So, in the last lesson, before 1845, we talked about all these issues with the small scale farm and the single and the, and the dependence on the crop, on the single crop, on the potato. In 1845, something very, very strange starts happening in Ireland. And all across the country, farmers start to notice that the stalks of the potato plants and the leaves are beginning to turn black. They're beginning to rot. 
And this is obviously very, very strange. A living plant should not be rotting. You, know, you might see one or two plants, you know, in a huge field of potatoes. You might see a bit of, you know, plants getting damaged. But with the huge amount of them turning black and beginning to rot, it becomes very a big, big warning sign. They also start to notice a foul smell coming from the fields. Right? There's a stench coming from the field. So if you're going around the countryside, you can smell a rotting stench. And they don't really know what's going on here. They're very, very worried. And when they then start to harvest the potatoes, when it comes time to start picking potatoes in order to have your harvest done, as they pick, as they dig them up, they, they find that the potato vegetables, the tubers, the piece that we eat, it's growing below the ground has actually turned rotten All right. and you see in your booklet on the fourth page of the booklet to how the potatoes would have looked rotten black shriveled things and they were completely inedible All right. people were shocked by this you know this is not something that they had really seen a huge amount of before whilst famine was not uncommon people had, did go hungry on a regular basis before the great famine this kind of looking at all of the potatoes rotting in the ground and there being nothing that they can do about it was a huge shock to the people. So they were kind of left in a difficult situation, but luckily they had prepared for this. They knew that hard times come, that sometimes you have bad years, and there were stores of food that a lot of people had. So a lot of people just turned to their stores. And with the storage of food they had, they may have been hungry over the winter, of 80, over the rest of the year, but they weren't going to be totally starving. And so 1845 is the first year that the blight arrives, but we're not seeing huge mass devastation or, or debt across the country. People have a bit of stored food, and the kind of richer people might have some animals, so uh, even the cottiers might have a few chickens or have one or two uh, other animals. Tenant farmers could have a number of animals, and they turn to these animals and they you know, slaughtered these animals as their food stuff, and they can survive through the first year. Most people aren't too badly hit by this. The problem comes, becomes much worse, however, in 1846. And what happens here is that the blight strikes again, and they're not really prepared for this. Right? Whilst they're used to maybe one year having a bad year, people weren't used to the fact of having two bad years. Okay? Um, and up to two thirds of the potato crops across the country is totally destroyed by this. So 66% of the potatoes in the country are totally destroyed in this year. Again, huge, huge problem. People now had no stores of food to turn to and hunger and starvation spread rapidly. So by the second year, we're already seeing huge levels of hunger and starvation. Those who had had small amounts of food uh, suffered because they had a weakened immune system so even though they did have a small amount they may not be totally starving but their bodies were weakened by the lack by not having enough food and disease spread hugely huge numbers died from disease such as tuberculosis measles scarlet fever in this time period and most of these are diseases that we don't really that we won't die from in nowadays and we have we because we have proper nutrition at the time these are issues that people are facing to get through 1846, there is a lot, a lot of devastation. And you can see in the booklet, if you look in there, a quote from a priest in Galway in 1846 says, As to the potatoes, they're all gone, clean gone. If travelling by night, you would know when a potato field was near by the smell. The fields pre present a space of withered black stalks. So the place, it's, it's quite an apocalyptic image here. Disgusting smells, horrible image of potatoes rotting in the ground. And this brings us into 47. And 1847, sometimes referred to as Black 47, is generally considered to be the most devastating year of the famine. The strange thing about this is that they actually the blight doesn't hit too bad in 1847. The blight eases off, the disease that's affecting potatoes isn't affecting them as badly. The issue is that in order to grow the crops, they need to have seeds and plants from years before. By the time we get to 1847, after two years of blight, they just haven't been able to plant enough food. And so, even though the plants are growing, there's not enough plants and there's not nearly enough food being produced as a result. So, hunger and starvation are absolutely rampant.
it spread, there was huge levels of debt, was huge suffering in the country because they just aren't growing enough food. So the first three years of famine, you can see already hugely devastating effects. All right? The country is really, really struggling with this. They're not, going, they're not surviving. People are dying en masse because of this. And then in 1848, they have the terrible stroke that the blight returns again and it stays. All right. Now, the government at the time, we'll look at this a little bit later, the government based in London believed that the famine is no longer being taking effect by 1850. And perhaps the blight itself has kind of moved on to quite a large extent. However, starvation is still huge. People have been evicted. And we're going to look at a lot of this detail later. People have been thrown off their land. People have nowhere to grow their food. People have no food to grow. And in 1850, actually a lot more people die in 1850 than did in 1846. Some of this can be put down to the fact that the government is not intervening in enough ways to help. So from 1848 to 1850, the famine is still continuing, right? The blight maybe is not quite as devastating to the crop, but there's still wide starvation due to the fact that people have been thrown off their land, people aren't able to grow the food, and people are just living this homeless, horrible, destitute existence. By 1850 to 1852, some historians will start to claim that the famine is coming to an end. Right? The blight did ease off, and crops began to grow, but starvation and disease were still rampant. There was still a huge amount of starvation and disease going on. Right? The, the poor especially continued to die in huge numbers. While the wealthier were getting back to their lives, the poorest people, the landless laborers, the cottiers, were, and the people who had been thrown off their land were still really, really being hit very hard by this terrible famine. All right, now that is a very, very quick run through of the different years of the famine. Okay, we are going to go into some of this in a bit much more detail in later lessons. Today is just to give you a feeling of what went on. Now, we've managed to run through, I've, we've gone through this in space of about, you know, eight or nine minutes now it took to actually talk through this. But you have to remember for the people, they are suffering here for seven years. It is seven years of very little food seven years of people dying all around you seven years of starvation this is a hugely hugely traumatic time for people this is one of the hardest things that anyone could ever possibly imagine to live through it is an absolute devastating effect on the people and even the people who survive they have lost their families they have lost their friends and they have they are losing their culture it's very very hard to stay happy or to have a positive outlook after this amount of suffering Okay, so it's not just the debt and suffering, but the debt is huge, and immigration, which we'll talk about later, is also huge. But the mental and emotional effects this has on people and on the culture, we can't underestimate that either. Okay, so by this stage, what you should have done is you should have been pausing as you went through each of those each of those years, and by this stage, you should have that timeline filled out. You should have one or two sentences for 1845. One or two sentences for 1846, 1847, 48 to 50, and 50 to 52. So if you haven't had done that, I just want to suggest pausing here now, going back and filling all of that in. You can use the booklet if you've missed anything that I've said, or you can, of course, rewind through the video. Okay, so once you've filled that book, that uh, timeline in, you can then, that's going to be one thing that you're going to submit to me on Teams. So you're going to take a screenshot or that, or a picture with your iPad, or however you want to do it and you are going to submit that on teams in a few minutes now to finish up today i'm going to do one more little task and that is looking at a primary source now first things first if you cannot read this on the screen i have uploaded a screenshot of this slide and so you can use that and you might be able to zoom in more easily on that to read this article there are four questions I want to know as you're reading this article. I want to know what is the name of the newspaper the article is printed in. Okay. I want to know on what date was this article printed. I want you to find out the meanings of these four words, deplorable, pestilence, remedies, and diversified. I'm choosing those words because they are words you might come up with, come up against a number of times quite commonly in this time period. 
And it's just the last question where I'm asking you to tell me something about the content of the article. So you're going to have to read through this article. It is slightly a difficult article, but I want you to be able to see if you can you tell me, does the author think that the cures being suggested for potato blight will all work? Okay, so you're going to read through that article. You're going to try and analyze some of that information and you're going to submit that section to me on Teams as well. So the two tasks to be submitted on Teams is that timeline and then these four questions on this article. Okay guys, so if any questions, please do get in contact with me. I'm going to leave it at that for today and we'll continue with some more work on the family moving into next week.